There are so many different kinds of primates in the world today. And in fact, if we look at it cladistically speaking, primates is one of the most crowded orders in the class Mammalia. It's third, falling behind Rodentia, the rodents, and number one being Chiroptera, the bats. But primates does pretty well. There are somewhere between, depending on how you classify things, 375 and 524 species of primate on the Earth, and that's just today. And I think primates are very interesting, not just because this is the order that we belong to, but because this group is just wildly diverse. They come in many different sizes, with silverback gorillas maxing out at 430 pounds and dwarf mouse lemurs bringing up the rear at 43 grams. They move in different ways, with quadrupeds and bipeds in the trees and on the ground. Primates eat different things, from insects and fruits to flowers, gums, leaves, and meat. They live in different group sizes, large and small and solitary. They have different social and mating systems, multi-male, multi-female, polygyny, polyandry, and pair bonded. Sometimes males are the alphas and sometimes females are the alphas. Sometimes there is co-dominance and sometimes there is no alpha at all. They live all across the world, in the cold and in the heat, up high and down low, in the past and in the present. So how on earth do we make sense of them all, all the world's primates? Well, first we have to organize them. So let's do so starting at where primates split off from mammals. That is to say where the order primates splits off from its sort of class mammalia, or splits off isn't the word, further specifies. The order primates belongs to the class mammalia. Compared to all other mammals, primates generally have grasping hands with a nail on the halix, forward-facing orbits that give them binocular vision, and large brains for their body size. There's quite a bit more minutia, but these characteristics will generally work. Already we see that humans fall into the order primates. We have big brains for our body sizes, grasping hands with nails on our digits, and binocular vision. Our eyes are in the front. And, of course, so do all the other primates. That's why they're in the order primates. Within the order primates, we have the strepsirines and the haplorines. Strepsirines are colloquially known as the wet-nosed primates, and they've also long been called the primitive or lower primates. Conversely, haplorines are the dry-nosed primates who are the higher primates. The reason that strepsirines are sort of classically considered the lower primates or the primitive primates is because they retain this ancestral mammal condition where the haplorines have gotten considerably more derived. Here's what I mean. Strepsirines have unfused frontal bones as well as an unfused mandible. They also have the retention of the tapetum lucidum. This is the reflective layer in the eye of many mammals that gives them their eye shine and also their excellent night vision. Strepsirines also have an emphasis on olfaction as a sense with large olfactory bulbs and an intact ranarium. This is that split upper lip that's seen in other mammals but not haplorine primates. Strepsirines have large turbinates in their nasal aperture, increasing the surface area of these large bony scrolls and aiding in their sense of smell. They also have a structure called the postorbital bar, which partially closes off the orbit, but not as much as what we see in haplorines, which have a postorbital plate. Finally, strepsirines have multiple pairs of nipples and a bicornuate uterus. Within strepsirine, we have two infraorders. These are the lemuriforms and the lorisiforms. Obviously, this includes things like lemurs, but also lorises, galagos, and the ii. Believe it or not, these guys are all actually primates. They have their own derived traits, of course, namely a structure called the tooth comb. This is a neat little derived structure that allows them to groom one another effectively. Within the lemuriforms, we see a separation into lemuroids, lemurs generally, and daubentonioids, the ii's. Lemuriforms can be further divided out into four families, lemuridae, indriidae, chirogalidae, and lepilemuridae. Within lorisiforms, we see a separation into lorisids and galligids. So those are all the strepsirines. In our other group, our haplorines, we see a separation into tarsierforms, which is unsurprisingly just the tarsier, and the incredibly massive anthropoid group. Both of these groups have the same general haplorine traits. They have a heavy reliance on vision with a postorbital plate that builds on the postorbital bar seen in the strepsirines, and as such, they have a reduced olfactory bulb as well as reduced turbinates. Haplorines also have fused frontal bones and a mandibular symphysis, meaning their mandible is fused with one exception. They have dry noses, the loss of the renarium, and no tapetum lucidum. Haplorines also have a unicornuate uterus and a single pair of nipples. Obviously, looking at the difference between the strepsirines and the haplorines, humans fall into the haplorine group. 
To take a moment to talk about tarsiers, they share more with haplorines than they do with strepsirines, hence why they're in this semi-order. However, they do have a handful of strepsirine traits, including an unfused mandible, multiple nipples, and a bicornuate uterus. These animals are, of course, primates, and they're known for their massive orbits and, interestingly enough, the only primate having an exclusively carnivorous diet. Anthropoids have two additional groups within them, nested, you might say, including the catarines and the platyrines. Obviously, by nature of nested hierarchies, these guys all have the characteristics of haplorines and the characteristics further of anthropoids, but here they further specify in their own unique groups. One of the most basic differences between catarines and platyrines is the orientation of their nostrils, interestingly enough. Platyrines, the New World monkeys, as it were, have nostrils that are laterally splayed. They stick out to the side, whereas catarines, where humans fall in, have nostrils that face downward. Digging in a bit further with the platyrines, they have a 2133 dental formula. This means that in every quadrant of their mouths, as in this individual of Pythicea Pythicea, they have two incisors, one canine, three premolars, and three molars. Platyrines additionally have a tympanic bone that is structured like a ring and their pterion region is organized a bit differently than what we see in the catarines. Platyrine classification is actually a little bit dicey, but here's how I'm going to lay it out for you. Conservatively, we can break down the platyrines into three major families. Pythiciidae, which includes the wakaris, the sakis, both bearded and non, and the teeny monkeys. Atelidae, which includes the spider monkeys, howler monkeys, and woolly monkeys, as well as the woolly spider monkeys, and Cebidae, which includes the night monkeys, squirrel monkeys, capuchins, marmosets, and tamarins. In reality, the platyrines might just hash out in a really different way. It's going to depend on how specific we want to get. Pithecids, the Pithecidae family, may hash out in a way that kind of removes Calicebus or TD monkeys into their own family. So they would be their own thing, and then the Pithecids would just be the Wakaris, the Sakis, Bearded, and Non. Cebidae may get seriously hacked to bits, in which case we would have Aotidae, the owl monkeys being their own family, as well as the Calatrichidae, so Marmosets and Tamarins being their own family. If we end up hacking up the platyrines a little bit more, which may or may not be appropriate, then we're going to basically double the number of families. So if that ends up being the case, then we're going to have Pythiciidae as a family, uh, Calicebidae, we get Aotidae, Cebidae, Calatrichidae, and Atelidae. The catarines, or the so-called Old World monkeys, have those downwardly turned nostrils and a 2-1-2-3 dental formula. This simply means, as in the case of this rhesus macaque, Macaca mulata, that in any quadrant of the mouth, these guys have two incisors, one canine, two premolars, and three molars. They're basically missing one premolar as compared to the platyrine general condition. Catarines additionally have a tympanic tube rather than a tympanic ring. They're found just about everywhere, given humans are considered to be catarines. And included in catarine, we have three main families. Cercopithecidae, the cheek pouch and leaf-eating monkeys, Hylobatidae, the gibbons, and Hominidae, the great apes. In this series, I kind of want to play around with primatology, and I want to introduce you guys to, as named after my primary source, I want to introduce you to all the world's primates and talk about the incredible diversity that this order that our order has to offer. So I was thinking that we would take this generally one family at a time and where relevant, where there's just a ton of information to get into, I want to dig a little bit deeper. So for instance, in the case of Cercopithecidae, our generally old world monkey family, excluding the apes, the gibbons and humans and other great apes, I want to take a little bit more time and maybe break that down into smaller groups. But there are other families that are pretty tight-knit that I think we could cover in a single video. I just would like to talk about primates. I think they're awesome, and I want to explain to you exactly why they're so awesome. So I'm excited to get started on this. And in the meantime, don't forget to use your dexterous hands, your primate-like hands, to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this channel, consider supporting me on Patreon. In the meantime, please do. Take care of yourselves.